How cool is that? That right there is an understanding of what these boats really do. I was talking to Princess Yachts recently and they said, look, you're doing all these yacht tours of our boats. Why don't you come down and have her run out on one? And I said, that would be absolutely fantastic. Let me know. And they've been good as their word. And they have this Princess F70 that you can see behind me going out for trials. So they've invited me down to have her run out. And that, hence the life jacket, because they are very hot, quite rightly, on health and safety. So anything that's involved with the factory, of course, we have to do everything completely properly. Now, this particular boat, I have actually featured on the channel before, so I'm going to do a quick yacht tour anyway for those that haven't seen it. And we'll start at the back here with the high-low platform. So this is where you would put your tender and this would lower into the water in order to launch it. And as we head on, a couple of things worth mentioning are, for example, this is for a life raft. There's some safety kit in there at the moment, but normally you'd have a life raft put in there. And as we head up onto here, of course, we've got the cockpit area. This table unfolds as you would expect. So if you want to dine around there, you can have a lot more space and then we'll head on inside. Now the 70 foot Princess is very much the size of the boat which you could run with a crew if you wanted to, but you could certainly own or operate if you had two of you who were competent at handling a boat, no problem at all. So with that in mind, it has got the galley aft layout and that means that if you're having a party on the boat or you're just feeding people, it caters very well for the cockpit and for the interior of the boat or indeed up to the flybridge. There's a lift up window here as you can see so that with the doors open and the window lifted up, that really connects these two areas nicely. And then in here, you've got things like the full height fridge freezer. That's in there. Freezer underneath. And then on this side, this is storage for things like your crockery. You can see more of it there. And then over here, you've got your cutlery. And the other thing that you'll find in here, of course, is the dishwasher. Now this particular boat has the Revere Oak, the last boat I looked at had the walnut. So this is a rather lighter finish and it's the satin finish again rather than the high gloss which is very contemporary, looks very nice and keeps this whole area very light and that of course is helped by the fact it's got these huge windows all the way around. We've got a dining area here, again you can fold this up and make that into a small area so if you're having a bit of a party on the boat you don't need the great big table there and what that does is it leaves the saloon area completely free just for entertaining. So you've got this lovely big deep settee that goes around here, a nice little coffee table, and then opposite that you've got another settee. These here incidentally are for your glasses. Like so. And these are all soft clothes as you can see. And then clip back in place like that. There's a TV in behind here. I always talk about these TVs, I never show them. So I'm going to hit the button today since we've got a bit more time than we do at the boat shows. This is how this works. So that gives you a really good entertainment area. And then you've got speakers in the ceiling. You can see them here and here and across the back as well, color coded so you can only just see them. Um, also in this unit, just while we're here, there is a fridge. So that's for your bar and an ice maker. And then ahead of that, that's for bottles and more glasses if you wish them. Now ahead of that is a nice little area next to the helm, so that's great when you're out and cruising, it brings you up a couple of steps so you've got a great view out. And the helm itself, which of course we'll be seeing in more detail when we head out, that's got a side door as well. And then from here, there are two accesses down to the lower deck. So we'll head down the forward one first of all because this is the guest area. And as we're passing it, I'll just point this out because this is the switch panel across here. So all of your 24 volt ship systems are here and all of your 230, 240 volt systems are here. And then this is isolated for things like your windlass, your passerelle, your high load items and so on. Anyway, let's crack on down a little bit further because we'll find up here in the front is the VIP guest cabin great size, done some really nice things with the lighting in here. You can see it all the way around underneath here on both sides and it's under the floor as well. So that's nice. Um, this of course is a wardrobe and then there's more storage up around the tops of these and in fact under the bed as well. These are very big drawers so you can tuck away bedding or towels or whatever you want to put into there and as you'd expect this one has its own ensuite and that's in there separate shower stall, 
plenty of space. Further back from here, you've then got two more guest cabins. These are pretty similar. So two singles in here. Interesting thing about these is at the touch of a button, you can actually slide that one across as you can see it doing now. And that turns that into a double. So if you've got guests that want to double in here, that's very easily done. And then this one has access through to the day heads. So again, separate shower and, uh, and the toilet just there. Come out of here. There is another cabin opposite, as I mentioned. That shares that day heads, which of course is access from here. So that is a very similar arrangement big windows in here and these circles are opening sections so you can get plenty of ventilation through here and again lots of storage in areas like that and down between the beds and so on so that's the guest area another thing actually worth mentioning while we're here is these steps you might have noticed that they've got little gaps around them and that's because if we lift this one massive storage void in here so at the minute it's got the stools that you can add around the table. Those big flight cases at the back, those are all the instruction books for the boat. But in there you can put obviously uh, more bedding or a vacuum cleaner or whatever you want really. It's just a really good storage area. And in fact, what that's particularly useful for is if you do have guests who turn up with suitcases, there's normally nowhere to put them. That is the perfect spot. Okay, let's go and look at the master cabin, and that, as I mentioned, is back up here. And then we take a turn down to this side, and again, this very nicely lit stairway, big window here. These windows have blinds on them, by the way, you can see it just tucked up away in there. So if you want a bit more privacy, you can have it. And that brings us into this area, where we have laundry facilities by Miele, and a bit more storage. And then as we head around, there's a doorway here, and that takes you into the master cabin. You might be able to hear the fans running. Normally that's for the air conditioning. We're in Plymouth in the beginning of March, so today it's heating. It's the same system, it works for both. And this, as you'd expect, is a really nice cabin. Masses of storage in here, you can see it all the way along there. And some really nice finishes, like the way they've done this wood and then this upholstery. And there's like a little mirror finish inside there. That's very nicely done. TV on the wall of course and if we head over to this side we will find the ensuite so this of course is just for this cabin big shower in there and then you've got your sink and your loo and again big window and an opening section as well that is a very nice cabin indeed excellent Let's press on a bit further. We'll have a quick look around the decks, but then we're not going to waste too much time on doing this because, as I say, I do already have a tour of this boat and I'm quite keen to get going. So, let's go and have a look around the outside. We'll head back out through here. And this time, we'll take a turn around the outside. I'll slip my shoes back on. This area here is controls for stern two berthing so you've got throttles and bow and stern thruster controls and your anchor and that means when you're reversing into a berth you can stand back here control the boat and step straight off very easily again if you're short-handed boating that is invaluable and if we head up this side deck it'll take us down to the front you can see some of the other princess boats here being readied these are all brand new princess boats all the way along here there's more over here as well and this is just one marina they have other marinas with boats waiting to be dispatched as well So up here is the bow area, so you've got this great seating area around here. There's a cushion missing at the minute because they've had a tiny floor with it, so that's been taken off and uh, replaced. But that of course gives a great sunbathing area. That section there is because there's an access hatch in that forward cabin, so you've got a way out of that lower accommodation out through the front of the boat that's ever needed. And then up here, these are access to the chain locker. And the anchor winch of course is on the top there and then there's a bit of storage let's just move that out of the way underneath that one so that's a remote control for the anchor winch 
and that's a manual winch there so if it ever went wrong you can slot that into there and you can actually drop that manually if it's needed or raise it of course okay let's go back down this side we'll have a quick look at the flybridge looks like we've got a couple of crew turned up so then i think we'll be about ready to go as i say I'm not going to do the engine space or the crew cabin, but I do have an F70 video on the channel and I'll link to that so that if you want to see that, you certainly can do. But let's just finish this tour up here. This is quite neat. There's a side access door, so if you're alongside a quay, that's another way on and off the boat. And if we head up here, we have a Bimini top up at the moment. I don't think we're going to need that today. Well, it's quite sunny, but uh, it's not exactly the med. And then up here, big sunbathing area at the back of the boat. This is the radar, TV aerial. There's a searchlight up on here as well. It's a remote control searchlight. So that can be controlled from either helm position. And that little fella there spinning around, that's measuring wind speed and relaying that to the helm. Ahead of this, huge social area up here around this big table. There's a bar up here as well. This has got the barbecue underneath it. There's a sink in here, of course. This is a little bit of water from they've been cleaning the boat. That's not a mottled finish. And then in here, storage, bin, and a fridge. And then up ahead of this, this is quite interesting because they put this into the sunbathing position. So you can have this as a nice sheltered sunbathing area next to the helm, but this seat and this will come out, and make that into a big L-shaped seating area so that when you're underway, you can get a load of people all sat around here together and all enjoying the boat. And as we go right to the front, the helm position, of course, is here. And then that's just a big ice chest in there. So if you want to chuck a load of ice in there, you can see it's got a drain and uh, you can keep a few drinks in there as well if you want to. Anyway, that's about it. As I mentioned, we're in Plymouth. This is King Point Marina, where we are at the moment. Quite a blustery day, which might make things interesting when we get out to sea. Um, and that over there is where we're going. So I think we will stop the tour now, head on back down, and let's go and find out what this boat is really all about. We are up and running and ready to go. So we're all good to go. We've got some pretty blustery conditions off of Plymouth today. So because this boat is absolutely brand spanking new, we've taken in all the cushions from up here because obviously this needs to be kept absolutely pristine. Normally from an owner's point of view, they would just put covers over them rather than taking them in, but we want to keep this boat perfect. Now we've got Jack at the helm and we've got Pete doing the lines for us. And people often ask, can two people manage a boat of this size? Well, you're about to see that happen. And as you can see, we're not in a massively big area here either. So what we've got at the minute is the lines coming off. Well and we are all clear. So what we've got now is the bow thrusters in action. That's the controls over on the left-hand side of the wheel. Just a little bit of throttle. So that is slipping us very gently away. Stern thrusters push the back out. And we're away. Easy as that. Lines are coming in. say so this is a big boat in blustery conditions but it's really steady that bleeping you can hear is the engines going into neutral so it's just to let you know so you don't have to watch the throttles constantly it just reassures you that you have actually got neutral and this is just being eked out with just little bursts of power And that fella there is a Princess Y85. Very impressive boat. I've got a video of one of those on my channel. So if you want to see what that looks like in, on board, then uh, do a quick search and you'll find it. But anyway, back to the business in hand. You can see the prop wash from the thruster there, just helping keep the nose up and away from that boat. Victoria is at Delta Boy. Chin. 
and what you can see now is just how maneuverable these boats are because by using both engines independently of each other so we've got starboard one astern at the moment for example this boat will actually spin pretty much in its own length there you go that is literally rotating around its center line you can see the back of the boat just there So we're barely moving forward or back. We are just rotating. That's pretty impressive. And you can see, as I said earlier, some of the other princesses that are waiting for dispatch. These two here, this is a new one. This is a new 45 just here. So these are all boats having their final preparation. And that little silver fellow down there is an R35. Well, I hope we never go out on one of those at some stage as well. So stay tuned for that. That's a cool looking boat. Anyway, we're now pointed the right way and heading out. What you'll notice here is the wheel gets very little use at all. It's all done on the engines at low speed. So by pulling the port engine back and ahead on the starboard, it is just pivoting the boat again. And very neatly pointing us in the right direction. These, once you get the hang of them, are actually incredibly manoeuvrable. And that ahead of us is Plymouth Sound. We're going to go out through Plymouth Sound and then we're hoping to go out to sea a little bit and see if we can just put this boat through its paces for you. Nicely done, Mr. Jack. Thank you very much. How long have you been doing this? So I'm studying driving boats. Yep. Uh, two and a half years. Really? Wow. Two and, a half years. and what's the biggest you've driven? 85. Really? That's a chunk of boat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, get our launch that one on Sunday, the one we just went past on the hammerhead there. Uh -huh. um, yeah, like Pete was saying, you know, we because it's a commercial business, we end up doing things that you wouldn't normally do as a as a boat user. But um, well, in terms of wind strength and when you're going yeah. out, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's all part of it. Uh, some of the, some of the older guys here, Pete and guy we just went past on the 78 there, are phenomenal boat drivers. Yeah. Well, you didn't do too badly yourself, I have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> So in terms of testing, do you take every single boat out? So every single boat goes through a, a set series of test procedures. Um, obviously the larger the boat, the, the longer those test procedures take. Right. Um, it'll be everything right, from then. electrical, mechanical systems, AV, configuration, how the boat handles at sea, engine trials, stabilisation trials if it has them on board. Yeah. So it's a pretty thorough workout for the boat then? Yeah, so it, it can range from anything between maybe 10 days two weeks for the smaller boats through to maybe more like a month for the for the m class really so you'll spend a month just making sure everything's perfect yeah so the, the boat will get dipped in the water and um, it starts getting powered up go through the the, the dock side systems that we can before taking the boat to sea make sure everything's seaworthy um, and then it comes a, a certain stage of reach when the sea trolls commence and there'll be there'll be various sea trolls fantastic excellent thank you Here, and once we get out of here, we 
can open up a bit and we can see what she's like. Okay, so now out in unrestricted water, throttles are opening. We're already up to about 30 knots, it's absolutely effortless. Just been cleared at all from here. The only thing that's changed is the amount of wind that's hitting it. We're going directly into it. Whilst it's still fairly calm, I'm going to have a little drive on this beast and see what it's like. So we're currently doing 13 knots, we're going to get a bit of throttle. Now we're pushing up onto the plane. We'll head out a little bit and see what it's like. That's already up to about 24 knots. Let's see if we can carve a few turns. something a bit rougher. So what we have decided to do since it is still pretty nippy out here at the moment, although it is a lovely sunny day, is we're going to head downstairs and see what she's like from down there. So I'm going to throttle her off from here. She's doing 26 knots at the moment, but that's going to just bring the speed right back. You can see behind me the wash of the boat. This is the lower helm and this is the real magic of a flybridge boat because you've got that great outdoors experience that we had just now but actually if you want to cover a few miles if the weather is too cold or indeed too hot and you've got this area here you've got these big wipers that you can see going at the moment you've got the wash wipe on just to clear a little bit of spray and because this helm position is raised up you've got a really great view out from here you don't feel at all compromised cool let's go to go shall we see it there about 29 knots and we can sit here we can talk quietly we've got a great view out the boat's incredibly stable and it's just a really nice place to be and this is what these boats do so well is cover ground effortlessly it's like being in a really big engine luxury car or maybe a private jet you just don't feel the motion and it's a really fantastic way of covering ground so for all the fun that we have with these boats swimming off the back of them and sleeping on them and entertaining on them this ultimately is what a boat should be able to do well and this is what a princess does absolutely brilliantly. Actually one thing I must show you while we're out here is let's head down to the master stateroom because this is a view that we don't normally get. Check this out. Look at that. That's where you get a real impression of speed. Let's go and have a look on the other side. This is where we put all the cushions so Excuse all those everywhere, but it's worth coming in here to see this. Yeah, here we go. Come and look at this. How cool.
cool is that? That right there is an understanding of what these boats really do. Absolutely incredible. 